Hey peeps, we are back. We're talking The Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 14, episode five. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, so before we get into the show, you know what? I would just like to say that this particular episode is brought to you by... Close your legs to married men. Close, clo close your legs to married men. Okay, that did not age well. Let me just tell you, right now there is a lawsuit happening. It turns out that this boyfriend of Nene Leakes, which we've all known for several, several months now, when Greg passed away, pretty quickly after Greg's passing, Nene started dating this guy and he's married. He has a wife and his wife lives in North Carolina. North Carolina is one of the seven states that you can actually sue the mistress or the side guy or what do we call the the guy who's cheating with a wife? I don't know. Anyway, you can sue them for alienation of uh, marriage, um, for all kinds of things. You know, this lady is alleging that Nene absolutely knew that he was married and she still took up with him. The lady is saying that she snatched him away from her and her 10 year old son by showing him around her rich and famous friends, showing him the lifestyle of being rich. The man has flown Nene over to Africa and introduced her to his family. This lady is not here for it. Nene goes out on social media after learning she's being sued and posted a picture that said, yours, mine, ours. That's just tacky. Listen, that is very helpful to the prosecution in this case. You know this man is married. You know, and Greg's daughter posted out on Instagram or Twitter earlier too that Greg was married when Nene met him and started dating him as well. And she says that Nene hasn't reached out to any of them, you know, in quite some time. So I think you should be quiet and seek legal advice because you could absolutely have to pay this lady. That didn't age well, not the close your legs to married men. And it turns out Greg was married when you met him. And now you got this woman's husband. I'm just saying, mm -mm. no ma'am. Okay, so on to the show. So the show picks up right where we left off. They're still in New York. It's the first night and they're still at dinner when Sheree has just revealed to Ralph what Anthony said about him. But did you okay. apologize for putting so, your hands in my face? I will apologize if I put my hands in your face. But you went to these two and then it came back to me. Well, that is true. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. Yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to let you see your child. I don't know. At That's some point, you gotta have to like pull back and just let him start reaching out. They As a mother, I can't that. do that. Dude, the sex stuff is just getting too out of hand. Bitches, you want us to walk around tomorrow with some shit in our damn coochie. The best thing I think that happened here is Sheree was able to call out Candy and Candy was able to step up and apologize. However, I was not feeling bad for Sheree at all. Of course I'm gonna talk to Kim and tell her what everybody's saying. A bone carrier is never off her job. See, she's always on her job. It to me just seems a little hypocritical. You have always been the bone collector. You have never cared how the other person felt but now you want Candy to care about your feelings. I thought that was a bit much. I was also happy to see that Drew apologized to Sheree because as Kenya stated, Sheree knew about the comments that, and that, that your personal assistant number one or that your personal assistant Anthony was saying about Ralph, but she didn't go tell Kenya or any of the other ladies that she knew that about Ralph. So I understand that. And the whole talking with your hands, listen, depending on the circle of girls or the circle of people that you hang out with, that talking with your hands can get you popped. You have got to be careful and respect people's boundaries and distance. That's all I'm saying. Now that whole Kenya Mark situation, you know, Mark is a bitch in my opinion. Um, Mark and Ralph are both supreme gaslighters. I think that Mark absolutely had no intentions of keeping Brooklyn the whole night. The comment that Kenya made that she can't do that because she's a mom, 
Girl, stop it. If Mark doesn't take the initiative to spend quality time with his daughter, that's Mark's loss. Um, I don't think that Kenya should try to force a relationship between Mark and Brooklyn because if he's not in it, if his heart is not in it, it's not going to be actual fun quality time. And I think it would affect Brooklyn in a negative way. If he hasn't tried to initiate seeing his daughter in three months, then he clearly does not care. What do you think? Get down in the comments and let me know. Yeah, I would definitely not force a relationship with Brooklyn and Mark. Um, the whole Marlo talking to Candy, I have to agree with Marlo. Um, this sex stuff with Candy has gotten really old and I'm over it. It is a little weird. It is a little creepy. You know, every time you hang out with your best girlfriend, you don't want it to always be about sex. And I do realize that she's got that adult toy line and she's promoting her business, but don't use me to promote your business. Um... Some people say that it was rude for Marlo to talk about her marriage and sex life with the group. And normally I would say, yeah, that was a little out of line, but Candy talks about it with the group. So if you share it with the group, Marlo should be able to bring it up with the group. So I would also like to say that Candy is vicious in her confessionals. And I want her to know that when the reunion comes around and the ladies get on her neck, she cannot sit there and act like a little bit of a victim. Cause no ma'am, if you can dish it, you better be able to take it. Cause you know, Marlo and Sheree are going to get all over her when the reunion comes around. Now, when Sonya and Kenya goes for that walk the next day, when Sonya talks about how attractive her husband Ross is after he won the Super Bowl, I said, girl, I get it, I understand. Because the man is quite handsome and attractive and sexy without the Super Bowl ring. So I get it. I get it. Kenya is talking to Sanya saying that she thinks that she may have been too hard on Ralph because she was, you know, triggered a little bit because of Mark. And personally, I don't think she was too hard on Ralph at all. I really don't. I think that Ralph needed to hear what Kenya had to say. And I also think that Drew should be thankful that Kenya said everything that she couldn't say herself. I mean, he absolutely paid more attention to what Kenya was saying than he has to Drew ever. Now, Drew going on Watch What Happens Live and being shady is a whole nother thing. I felt like Kenya was projecting in that moment. They're both on the East Coast, so I can say there's similarities, but at the end of the day, my husband stayed, and so that is the difference. <laughs> she says that she wasn't being shady, but that was absolutely shady. My thought is... Maybe their marriage didn't make it, but Kenya is not somewhere suffering and still dealing with this mess. You know what I mean? Kenya got out of that marriage. You are still there, still putting up with Ralph's gaslighting, still putting up with Ralph embarrassing you on national TV. So leave Kenya alone. Sonia going back to talk to Kenya about the drop it with Drew and how she doesn't appreciate Drew's behavior. Um... I don't know. I like Sonia. I do. But it seemed more manufactured. Maybe production asked her to bring it up. I don't know. Um, Drew has not done anything bad to Sonia. And Sonia has been filming with Drew the most. So you would think that if she has problems with the drop it with Drew or if she has problems with Drew's behavior, that she would have had those conversations with Drew first before bringing it to Kenya. I don't know. I'm giving Sonya the side eye a little bit. Now, honey, listen, Sheree talking to Candy on the phone, talking about she doesn't think Tyrone is going to get to come to New York because he's only allowed to be 100 miles away from his house. And New York City is 94.6 miles away. And he kind of just didn't really want to chance it. Where you at? At your other woman's house. That's what I'm thinking. And I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. Um, Tyrone is doing something down, down there and no ma'am, something is not right with this Tyrone. So when the group gets together and they go out to lunch, they start talking about famous people that they have either dated before or flirted with them before. And I had no idea that Marlo dated Jazzy Faye. Now Jazzy Faye is a very, very big music producer. But she said that the relationship didn't last long because he actually had a girlfriend and she was not here to be the side chick. I totally get it, Marlo. Then we found out that Candy used to date Gerald Levert. 
And she said that they had an unreleased song that was just sitting in her computer. Well, she released the song on her YouTube channel. I posted the song to my community tab. Check it out. I absolutely love it. Then we get to Drew. Went on a couple of dates. He flew me to his okay, games. Okay, okay. He would listen to my music before his games. Wait, Gene Simmons. Boo, give us Gene Simmons is about 30 years older. That makes him around in his 70s. Yeah, that's right up Marlo's alley. Okay, look. Oh, Fred! <laughs> I hate to say it, but I believe the story. Um, the reason I believe it is back in 2003, before she was a housewife, years and years before she was a housewife, she did an article, I believe, with the Chicago Tribune. In this article, they verify that not only did she talk to them about possibly dating LeBron, but she also does do music. And people were clowning her, saying that she was lying. And what music? Well, clearly she's been talking about this music and LeBron since 2003. So I think she's telling the truth. After the show aired, the King went online to post this love note to his wife. So that to me says, oh boy, I got to cover my butt. Get down in the comments, you guys, and let me know what you think. Kenya, I believe that too. I don't know why, but Kenya is a beautiful woman. She's smart. She's funny. I believe it. I think the group should be ashamed that they don't know who Jane Simmons is. Are you kidding me? The band Kiss is major. They have had huge success for decades. However, I would never have thought that Marlo was Gene Simmons' type. He does not come off as the type that would date an African-American woman. I'm just saying, it was very interesting. Kenya is absolutely hilarious, but she was absolutely right about Gene Simmons being in his 70s. However, they should still be ashamed that they don't know who he is. Ooh, babe. <laughs> no, who's doing that? Who's doing that? It's on my no, it's going Now, to me, I thought that was absolutely disgusting. There would be no laughing. There'd be no giggling. None of that. You know that this woman is asking who's doing that, and you are absolutely pushing this woman's vibrator. You have zero. Get off the button. That is not your wife. When she reacted and said that who's doing that, you just sat there laughing and giggling. Ralph is disgusting. It, it was just too much for me. Also, when she reached down in her pants to adjust her vibrator, where was her hand sanitizer? I, I just thought that was a little odd for me. <laughs> you know what? Well, it's a yeah, workout. Yeah. After she just had her whole. She had a whole. That's a fraud. <laughs> oh, there's somewhere wrong. The things you are looking for was archive site works. I promise you. You can just buy your products, honey, and it ships right to your door. When she by Sheree launches, it will work. I want to apologize to you if I offended you in any way, because I really didn't mean to. I was projecting. I, I don't like if I, if it's bullshit. I'm not gonna rock with it. So like you put your hand in Sheree's face. I didn't like that. Right? Like why 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 are we talking about it in front of everyone? Her way of explaining how she feels is like, girl, you should have wrote it down. On the Kenya. site to sign up for your weight loss program. <laughs> really? I didn't know that you had a Thank fitness Thank you. You know what? It crashed. Oh, so many people. The drop with Drew is just to maintain surgeries. Why did you have to get lipo? Because I had a hernia. Oh, I got this problem going on. My Achilles is hurting. Yeah. Health and fitness is my passion all this is real okay so that was gross but i laughed i really did you know carbonated beverages make me burp i'm just saying but i try to do it a little ladylike go to the next room go over to the other side of the room cover my mouth you know i don't just let it out that's just kind of rude but it was funny now honey listen this drop it with drew <laughs> That that was hilarious. It really was. I'm sorry that the website didn't work. You know, it crashed. You know, Marlo, <laughs> it's hilarious. When she said the website must have crashed, Marlo said, with all those customers. I mean, and Marlo, she was comic gold in this uh, episode. The fact that Drew didn't realize that she was being made fun of was also part of the comedy because, it was, girl, they are joking. You know, I don't believe that this is a Ponzi scheme. You know, and as I've said before, I don't begrudge a woman to have 
any kind of plastic surgery that she wants. Any man or woman, if they want to do something, I say do it. I really do. But it's really hard when you are saying that you are a fitness person and, you know, you're dropping it with Drew, but you really dropped into a surgery center. So when Sheree makes the comment that if people want to work out, she's all natural because she's she believes in health and fitness and working out. I think that that is absolutely true. It should be dropping with Sheree because that woman's body shows you that she is in that gym every day. The comments made about the different websites, Sheree, I don't think you should have said anything because you know, she by Sheree has been going on since season one or two and it's still not completely set up and you don't have a website. Um, GoDaddy.com will help you set up your website, uh, Elvira. Um, she is looking like Elvira in this recent confessional. I need you and that hair to go. That That is bad. Um, Kenya apologizing to Ralph. That is a big hell no. You know, he said that sometimes he can be misunderstood. No, uh, uh, there was no misunderstanding. We understand that you are a liar, a manipulator, a user, and an alleged cheater, and a gaslight king. No, you have not been misunderstood. Do I agree with Candy when she says that Sonia needs to work on how she speaks to people? Absolutely. The way she tried to jump around and talk to Drew, it was ridiculous. Say what you need to say. But my problem is this. You could have called her. You could have texted her. You could have, when you went on that walk with Kenya, you could have went on a walk with her. You could have met up with her, had a little tea, anything. You did that because you wanted the rest of the girls to hear you confront her. Sonia goes on Candy's YouTube channel and she says that Everybody keeps saying that she's friends with Drew, but her and Drew only went out a few times before the show started. You and her may have only gone out a few times before the show started, but you have filmed with her more than anybody else on the show. When you had your car accident, she said that her husband was out of town. She called her family and then she called Drew. Well, you called your family, but your family didn't come pick you up. Drew came and picked you up. And not only did Drew pick you up, she also drove you to your child's school so you could pick your child up. And then she drove you home. So to me, that buys a little bit of decency, a little bit of loyalty. Even if you don't like the way Drew is moving, you should have given her a little more respect than that by just talking to her one-on-one. -on -one. So when Drew realizes that Sonia says that they weren't really friends, she goes out on Twitter and she says, this flip flopping bitch at Sonia Rich Ross keeps kissing that ass as fake as they come. So we're never friends, clearly just friendly. Notes taken. By the way, Kenya Moore, I wasn't coming for you. Just fun shade. And then Sonia replies, actors gonna act. How long we been friends, Drew? What's my middle name? What's my favorite color? Girl, stop. And based on this tweet, looks like you're the one kissing ass. Girl, this is too much. They are doing way too daggone much. I don't know if Sonya was possibly just trying to um, get more camera time. Did the producers tell her to go after Drew? But I think her going after Drew was not really necessary. Um, you came to Drew's room before and she let you use her makeup artist. She didn't charge you for it. Listen, I think Sonya's being unfair to Drew at this point. Now, after Drew explains to the girls what this drop it with Drew is, that was hilarious. Sonya says, is it a meal delivery service? Sheree says, is it a weight loss camp in Chicago? Marlo took me out when she said, girl, you know it ain't nothing but a Facebook group. Stop it, Drew. These girls are crazy as hell. They really are. But this season has been really fun to watch. Now, Candy with that, her Achilles is hurting. That was so funny. But I do remember last season at the reunion, Drew did mention that she had some uh, medical issues, that she had some problems with her stomach or something like that. 
But I, I see where uh, Candy is going. The fact that Drew is not able to answer simple questions regarding her business says to me that she is just the face of the business and somebody else is doing the work. So the next day we see that Sheree is so excited. She is going to drive the two hour trip from New York City to Philly to see Tyrone and then fly back home. Now on this two hour journey, she is calling Tyrone. He is not answering his phone. She finally shows up there. She is sitting outside at a cafe, freezing her butt off, wrapped up in a very beautiful fur. She is looking gorgeous, honey, having some drinks and trying to stay warm while she is trying to get Tyrone on the phone. What does it mean when you call someone, it ring and then it go busy? That be blocked. No? Just so you know, uh, Eric's on the phone with the attorneys right now. Just to hopefully get something. What is the issue? Tyrone's attorney says he can't make it because it's a parole violation. I drove to Philly to meet Tyrone. So I've been here probably about almost two hours without Tyrone. So I look stupid as crazy as dumb as and I am trying not to cry because. Oh, don't cry, Sheree, don't cry. I think that Sheree is a beautiful, smart woman. And if he couldn't come to New York to see you, there is no way that I would drive all the way to Philly to see him. I don't know what it sounds like when you've been blocked, but I believe her daughter when she says that she thinks that Tyrone blocked her. And if that's the case, she needs to block Tyrone out of her life, period. There would be zero communication between me and Tyrone after that BS. What I love the most about this is Kenya. I mean, Kenya is coming off as a sweetheart this season. She really is. I love the part when she said, how can I help? Kenya was very comforting. She was trying to uplift Sheree. You know, her and Sheree have come a long way and I absolutely like this friendship and I hope that they can keep it. Um, Kenya knows how it feels to be hurt. She knows how it feels. And I think that Sheree should take Kenya's advice. She told her pretty much that you can learn lessons from good times and from the bad. You need to take this situation as a learning lesson. What it also reminded me of is remember way back when Sheree was going through everything with Bob, Kenya was there to support her then too. When Bob was disrespecting her and talking to her like crap, Kenya was right there being supportive. I think that Sheree needs to just move on. It's a lot of years wasted, a lot of times wasted. Seeing her cry broke my heart so bad. I truly do think that Tyrone is up to no good and that she needs to just move forward, concentrate on her family, her business, and finding a man who is free and clear and closer to her. You know, someone who is going to show some respect and not play games. Tyrone is clearly playing games with this woman. Anyway, you guys, what did you guys think about that scene? Seeing her cry really hurt my feelings. I said, oh my gosh, please do not let this jailbird break you down. This was public humiliation. This man had every chance to tell her that morning before she got in that car that he was not going to meet up with her. I just thought that was horrible. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye. Bye.